okay so this is the hardware hardware side um, basically it's a 61 key controller it's a universal USB controller so you can you can use a door preset and there's also a load of user presets and you have a kind of standalone mode preset as well for directly controlling analog lab independently of a door or anything um, it connects via USB it's very light um, you can also power it and use there's a MIDI out there so for example I could uh, run a hardware synth off that or you know um, put that into an interface that had a, a MIDI out it's nice light action almost full-size keys um, piano keys um, it's very very nice it's got a nice feel to it a few octaves octave up and down buttons so here are the transport controls uh, they, they'll control your door as well there's kind of stop record uh, fast forward loop usual functions here is a, a menu control it's push button rotary dial really nice feel like like plastic you can cycle through presets there are other functions there as well when you have um, parameters um, from the presets you can use this to adjust parameters so if you want fine increments you, you can do that here we have nine controllers these are mapped to um, controllers in the software rotary can endless rotary controllers and here we have some faders and they feel quite nice you know not too noisy um, Again, the, these map onto the software, so with each preset, you have a little bit of controllability there. Okay, so the, the premise of the review really, that I'm, you know, the theme that I'm writing the review around is uh, the transition right through this, the Mabira. Which could have originated anywhere, but I mean the earliest examples really were west coast of Africa around um, you know a few thousand years ago, five thousand years ago. And you, you can see those familiar shapes there. You know, there's kind of um, lyres and harps and, and different things. But uh, this kind of evolved at some stage, right? A keyboard into a, a kind of piano. And here we have. Imagine this, right? <laughs> imagine this is a an original move back in the um, late 60s, early 70s, whatever. So, in a sense, that is an evolution from the Mabira. Um, you know, it's percussive, right? You, you, you can hit down on things. Um, the difference is, there's an electronic um, uh, kind of vibration uh, of molecules created, right? That's the way I'm going to say it for now, right? So. Uh, there's a difference in how the actual sound is produced, but in a way the action is the same. And we see a transition into these kind of analog instruments, I guess you call them as well. What's kind of um, different about this, this is emulating things. You know, you can get a decent Mabira sound on here somewhere. There's six and a half thousand presets, so I haven't quite found it yet, but I'm sure there's one in there. But I mean, this isn't really trying to emulate that. This is with the software, the Analog 3 software, Analog Lab 3, it's emulating a range of different hardware electronic instruments, some of them digital, some of them analog, but classic synths. We can have a look now in standalone mode. So here we have the startup screen. There are 14 synths, six pianos, three organs, 6,540 presets included. Uh, and you can make as many as you want on as it, of, and you can make as many as you want of your own. Um, so let's start this up. Now, what I'm going to do is go through a few few patches. Let's start off with the ARP. Basically, you have a page here. You choose your synthesizer. Different synthesizers here. Types. You can do a search, and it's split into different sections. So. Presets are in the middle here. There's a good few. And this is a screen um, explaining, it has a little picture of the synth on there. And it allows you to sequence up, do layers. You can make the keyboard disappear. 
or it'll you know, respond to things. The control surface is mirrored here, so oh, I'm moving to analog. There we go, so now what I'm going to do is go for ARP. I played this through the uh, Adam S3V speakers. I've had them coming through a good big monitor here. It sounds absolutely awesome, right? It's really, really good sound quality. And I can't compare it to an ARP, uh, but yeah, it sounds good. Okay, so we got we got controls here as a filter. I just I just had a quick look at the screen. I know where everything is now. Turn up the resonance. That's the filter going up there. Okay, let's try something different now. We're gonna. What have I got there? Oh, we got CS80. I'll go for a pad there. Okay, let's go House in the Sky. That's what I was looking for. So I can I can I can move through the patches here as well. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah, I mean, I say it's hundreds of patches really for for each thing. So very very good. Let, let I'll quickly go through a few more. Um, let's try the Jupiter array. Uh, Astral voices. Well. Wow. Okay, so I can start to operate it from here now. for sure that the cut off this is going to be the same for most things and it is you only have to touch a controller and you get feedback on here as to what it is so without really having to change it it's the LFO So uh, I, I've got to go through a couple of others as well.
Well, the Synclavia is great, and the SEM, I'll just do an SEM maybe. And um, what have we got here? Alpha Waves, Comet Tail. <laughs> As far as I can recall, they've really got the character of the, those synths, you know. Um, uh, we could do a Matrix 12 as well. Um. <coughs> <coughs> Far away, let's have a listen to that one. <laughs> So, you know, there's kind of um, six and a half thousand presets. They're all tweakable. So you can you can make these original. You know, they, they don't have to be the same the same thing. Um, a real treat in here. I upgraded from Analog Lab 2 to Analog 3 during a review. I'll show you the software uh, later on, but um, it went really, really well. You know, it was very, very smooth. The Arteria website is really professional, excellent, and uh, I had no problem there. Some of the some of the instruments take up quite a bit of um, quite a bit of CPU. Like uh, there's a Buchla here. Just experiment, so there we go. So what's nice about standalone mode, you can take this, maybe a laptop out anywhere, plug it in the PA, into an amp, into a monitor. Um, I'd say this is a really good, uh, inspiring composition tool, and um, I know half a dozen people have come around to visit here, and they've they've all loved this. Um, they looked at it; it's got a few flashing lights. They go, "What's that?" Put a couple of patches on, and and they're away. You know, they they spend hours, and I feel the same. It's really good fun, really good value. So I, I'm kind of familiar with the old Beckstein grand piano and they have a German intimate grand piano here. Let's give a little bit of volume. Whoa. So, you know, I think with the sustain pedal as well, this is really really plausible feels good and again playing it through a monitor or a powerful speaker you really get a kind of feel for the body of the piano as well which I really like and um, we have we have organs here as well. Let's have a look at the Vox Continental. Um, actually, it was a black Vox. So some of the samples are kind of template. They're very laid back, like the Moog I compared to earlier was just a one oscillator template. Um, and then you get variations on you know the range of what an instrument would do. And then there's some added pizzazz that. Um, different uh, patch writers add to things so you, you get um, reverbs and uh, different effects like that so let's go to there we are black fox so that's a bit messy Lovely. 
And the final bit, really, I'm going to show you here is the multi. So these can be combinations of things. So we, let's go to a pad. Or let's go to a sequence. Um, after dark, just random. Uh, so what's that? So me, Moog, and an SEM. So it's playing a kind of pad sound and an arpeggio underneath. Them. That's kind of synchronised a little bit. So it'll do a range of stuff from kind of traditional sounds of the actual instruments, you know, authentic, pretty good copies, man, pretty good emulations, I've got to say it. Um, and they'll do some crazy stuff as well, and you, you can have fun and explore and tweak the patches and make them your own. Um, in the software here, let me go to edit. Yeah, so I, I can edit these patches if I want to turn... Oh, turn part one down. Oh, it's just that one there. I'm doing this uh, one-handed, wrong hand. There we go, so uh, we got effects on pre there, so uh, that's what's happening, yes. So, actually, let me find a different uh, different sequence here. Electro riser. Let's try that one. Nice, good for kind of sound design stuff. What have we got here? G police. Fantastic. So um, uh, we got a kind of mi little mixer here for the two channels. We got uh, send and returns to effects. And there's a range of effects. There's, there's two channels of effects. They all sound very, very good, very, very suited to the emulations. Um, as a MIDI page here, so we can uh, set, set our keyboard uh, keyboard assignments where we want the split. So you can have the bass just at the bottom. So you can do whatever you want, so it's pretty customizable. Um, so, kind of summing up, I'd like to say that you know the Arteria uh, Keylab 61 Essential and the Analog 3 Analog Lab 3 software uh, is excellent sound quality, it's a good range of sound. The other thing is pretty flexible, you've got most of the things you'd want to touch on the full synth with, with a good range of control over that so you know yeah the nice thing is you can go wrong on it as well you know you can push things too far make a tonal sound or whatever uh, you can have happy accidents so it's not too it's not too rigid but the nice thing you know if you like the Buchler easel if you like uh, the DX7 if you you can buy the full version of that which gives you a larger graphic and, and more control over everything but the sound quality is exactly the same you know, there's no you're not losing out there so i think it's a very good package for uh, you know just over 200 quid 220 quid uh, you get good excellent emulations uh, it's fun my visitors like it it's inspiring you can use in the composition room uh, you can use your band practice i take this out and gig with it no problem man you can blow people away with this um, and it's a valid composition and production tool. You know, and it's a gateway. I mean, you might want to buy a hardware synth based on, on what you do with this. So, I'll 
okay so that's the review done uh, thanks for watching fantastic um, I really recommend this it, it's great fun um, you know it's, it's solid enough you know for that's pretty ridges under there you know sometimes they get a bit flexy and kind of um, you know maybe I'll put this in a case so I took it out but for the studio it feel, feels pretty good really um, don't you uh, thanks for watching thoroughly recommend this five star review cheers all the best man